Yep. Thank you, Tim. So I have a few slides prepared, which I'll share in a moment. But just for those of you who, who don't uh, know me, I'm an Australian trained physician in uh, internal medicine as a specialty, but really a specialist in biostatistics and clinical trial design, which is my PhD in medicine. And then I went to the US and have worked on and off in the US and Australia in various roles in uh, big biotech companies in the, in the beginning, such as Genentech, but more recently at a company called Principia, where we took a company from a private valuation of about 100 million to a final uh, to an IP through an IPO and to a sale to Sanofi uh, for some small molecules in immunology for 3.6 billion dollars. So, uh, my expertise is really how to design and run clinical trials in a in a modestly capital constrained way, but following the science and and intelligently designing clinical trials. So, that's what Actin Engine is all about. So, hopefully, I'll be able to explain that to you in the next few minutes. Uh, and excuse me while I just pull this up. That's all right. We can see that. Yeah. Okay, great. So, yeah, so we are, as Tim said, a clinical stage company uh, in phase two for focusing on uh, diseases where cognition or the difficulty thinking is a primary problem. And that's obviously relevant to Alzheimer's disease where difficulty thinking and memory is, a, is the main issue. Uh, depression where difficulty thinking is common and in other diseases, which I'll explain. And we have a forward looking statement here, disclaimer, which is typical for a public company. And on this slide, I just wanna give you a little company snapshot. I'm not gonna go through every sub bullet, but we are in a very good position at Actinogen having uh, a molecule with very favorable pharmaceutical properties, low dose, low drug interaction potential, demonstrated target engagement in the brain, the, the, the organ of interest. Uh, we've got a lot of clinical data, more than 300 people safely treated at this point and demonstrated cognitive activity on attention and working memory in two independent, well-controlled, placebo-controlled trials. Uh, we've got attractive scientific rationale for the modification of cortisol in the brain. Uh, we've got good IP and a, and a good cash position at the at present at, at the end of the last quarter of more than $16 million and a highly functioning semi-virtual company model where we have a core team of about 10 people full-time in Australia, but uh, a number of really world-leading uh, world expert consultants uh, elsewhere in the world working with us. Over the past year, it's been pretty interesting in biotech. And on this uh, graph, you see the Actinogen share price, which uh, peaked a couple of times in the last 12 months and has very much followed the pattern of the uh, international, or particularly the US biotech indices. And it has started to recover in the last few months, as have those indices as well. I'd like to think that's the bottom for the market. Uh, we have released during this time some excellent information uh, we've had no setbacks, we've had major progress, and so I do believe uh, at the current uh, sort of bottom of the biotech market, we are very attractively priced. Uh, we currently have a market cap of around Aussie $100 million. Our primary shareholders are the BVF Partners Fund based in the USA, uh, and myself as the second biggest shareholder, and Edinburgh Technology, uh, who were the original inventors of the molecule earlier uh, last uh, last decade. We have a, a, an experienced board of directors and a very uh, experienced and competent uh, core team shown here on the right. I won't dwell on that. Very importantly, though, we have an incredibly uh, esteemed advisory board uh, for cognition. Uh, John Harrison is based in the UK. It is really Mr. Cognition, and we are having a science day next week. Uh, hopefully some of you can join that. Uh, you can join via our website uh, links. Uh, Dr. Dana Hilt is an experienced neurologist and CMO for neurology trials based in the US. And Christina Kur Olsen developed an antidepressant that has a statement in there about ability to improve cognition called Voltioxetine at Lundbeck, and she's based in Denmark. And Professor Paul Marath is really the guru of, uh, of computerized cognition measurements, which we are doing because they are the most sensitive way to measure improvements in cognition in modern clinical trials. In addition, we have a, a key group of uh, world uh, leaders in Alzheimer's disease, as well as in the endocrinology of the target. 
So what is Xanamem and what, how does it work? So it's an oral low dose once a day, at the moment a capsule, but it will soon be a pill uh, with a unique mechanism. And it, it is the first molecule in its class to actually get into the brain in adequate uh, levels to inhibit the target. And the target is this enzyme called 11-beta HSD1. And it thus, by doing that, we reduce the synthesis of this active uh, stress hormone called cortisol inside brain cells. And that modulates signaling in the short term, uh, enhancing cognition and underlying disease processes, which may well lead to modifying, slowing or halting the progression of Alzheimer's disease in particular, which would be essentially uh, reaching the holy grail of Alzheimer's disease research, which we hope we can, uh, we can see. But nevertheless, as a rapidly enhancing cognitive drug, uh, we have a very uh, exciting commercial and clinical uh, profile without disease modification. But to run you through some of the clinical data, previously in a small randomized trial called Xanahes in 2019, we saw improved uh, cognition on some of these computerized tests called working memory, visual attention, and psychomotor function shown in these three graphs. And what you're seeing is the faster reaction times in red of the actively treated patients versus placebo in the dotted blue line. What you see there is that over a 12 week treatment period, the, the graphs separate at about the fourth week uh, of treatment and are fairly stable uh, and separate thereafter. Uh, these, are, these results were then uh, looked at with different doses in a subsequent trial, and I'll show you those data, essentially showing exactly the same pattern of cognitive benefit. At roughly the same time, the company did a, 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 scan, a scan trial called uh, using PET imaging or positron emission tomography. And this is really a, a very neat study because it shows the actual inhibition of the target live inside the human brain. In other words, the target of interest. So on the left, you see a pooled image of baseline where the tracer is showing the activity of the enzyme in green and gold there. And on the right-hand side, you see near complete suppression of activity after seven days of dosing with doses as low as five milligrams and certainly a pretty flat, what we call dose response curve across five, 10 and 20 and the 30 milligrams, which is not shown. There's a little bit of blue breaking through in the cerebellum in five and thus our target dose range currently is five milligrams and 10 milligrams for our clinical trials with 10 milligrams really being our proof of concept dose. That then led us to design the Xanamir trial in two parts. And the first part is completed and was we announced the positive, exciting results in April. Uh, this is called the Part A study. This was a double blind phase 1B study in healthy volunteers uh, over the age of 50. We looked at 10 and 5 milligrams, designed to look at the effect sizes in cognition and thinking. And we treated people for six weeks. And the primary objectives were to look at safety, the hormone response to measure pharmacodynamics and effects on these cog state uh, test battery uh, domains as we showed you in the graphs before. So the top line results were very exciting. Uh, we saw clinically significant improvement in the attentional domains in exactly the same way as we saw in the prior study. Uh, and one of those uh, time points was statistically significant as well as being clinically significant. Uh, just as important was that safety was excellent uh, with very little difference between active and placebo groups uh, and all uh, there were no serious adverse events or severe adverse events. Both doses, 5 and 10 milligrams every day, showed uh, increased ACTH, which is the counter-regulatory hormone to cortisol, uh, and that uh, showed that the drug was biologically active. And overall, the findings were entirely consistent with the prior clinical data on cognition from the other trial and the high brain activity of the 5 and 10 milligram doses in that PET scan uh, study that I showed you. On this graph, we see the improvement in an attention composite of cognition uh, over time. And just like the previous study, uh, not much difference at week two, uh, quite a bit of difference at week four and maximal difference at week six. And then four weeks after uh, treatment stopped, those lines came back together again, as you would expect with a, with a short acting mechanism of cognitive enhancement that we were measuring in this type of trial. So this was very exciting for us and highly confirmatory. And uh, in addition, as I mentioned, safety was excellent. So I won't dwell on that. 
So the summary position we found ourselves in at the end of the Zanamia Part A study was that um, we are pursuing a, a, a strong unmet need for new diseases where our target cortisol uh, could be relevant inside brain cells. Um, we've demonstrated for the second time that the Xanamen molecules are rapidly acting cognitive enhancer, and in this case, uh, at pretty low doses. Um, and we are hoping to show in the future that the drug may well be a disease modifier as the preclinical data would suggest. So we met all our objectives in this trial. And the next stage that I'll run you through is the development of these phase two randomized trials, but now in patients with the early stages of Alzheimer's disease and in patients who have cognitive impairment associated with depression. So our strategy at Actinogen is threefold. It's to accelerate clinical development, forward planning, and to create value from partnerships. So on the clinical side, we're very focused on cognitive enhancement now that uh, the data in the clinic has shown us that this drug is clearly a cognitive enhancer. And that means, uh, we should be focusing on the early stages of Alzheimer's disease. We're helping people to think and remember things more clearly. We'll help them maintain a quality of life and independence so that uh, we can actually have a clinically meaningful effect on their lives. Uh, so we're implementing now the Xanamia Part B Phase two in those patients. That, that uh, study is starting this year and will enroll over the next year or year to 18 months. Uh, the depression phase two trial is uh, underway. Uh, that will most likely enroll patients this year and hopefully read out in the, in the end of 2023 or early in 2024. We're focusing our trial operations with a hands-on clinical operations model predominantly in Australia and adding additional international countries as appropriate. We have suspended our Fragile X program for the time being uh, until we can find alternative funding because cognitive enhancement is just one of the potential benefits in Fragile X and the other two indications, Alzheimer's and depression, are more focused on cognition. And that's why we're following the, the science here as much as we can and looking to uh, do Fragile X in the future under the appropriate circumstances. At the same time, we're optimizing manufacturing, doing ancillary studies, commercial planning, et cetera, you would expect uh, to optimize the path to commercialization. And we're actively engaged with a number of um, many actual pharma and biotech potential partners looking for potential uh, value-add partnerships, including potential regional opportunities. And we are uh, operating largely under a US IND for Alzheimer's and, and Fragile X, and will be for uh, most certainly for uh, depression. Uh, we will be having discussions with both the US regulators and the European regulators on our cognitive enhancement programs and uh, future development for phase three programs. So to go into a little bit more detail now uh, for Alzheimer's disease, we uh, have completed the Xanamia Part A study that I mentioned and showed you the results of on the left. Uh, we are now uh, implementing the Xanamia Part B study in what we call the early stages of Alzheimer's disease. And by that, we mean two groups of patients called mild cognitive impairment patients who don't have really any functional difficulties but have memory loss, and early Alzheimer's disease where people are starting to have functional impairment, meaning perhaps getting lost or not being able to complete uh, tasks at home. The study will be around 300 patients large and six months in duration using the same cog state cognitive uh, computerized testing that I showed you before in the previous study. In addition to that, in October, we'll be getting data from the previous phase two study called Xanadu in mild Alzheimer's disease patients. This study 10 milligrams versus placebo over, over a relatively short period of 12 weeks. Safety data was excellent in that study. Uh, the top line efficacy data was not positive. However, um, post hoc biomarker uh, analysis suggests there may have been some trends towards efficacy. But most importantly, we do have stored blood samples where we are now able to analyze using new techniques, uh, biomarkers in the blood to see whether or not the drug uh, does reduce as we expect biomarkers uh, in the positive direction, suggesting underlying biologic activity and the potential for disease modification in the long term. We'll also be looking back at biomarker positive patients and the efficacy of the drug in a reanalysis. So with those data, 
we will then uh, commence the next round of in regulatory interactions that will help to design the later clinical trials that we hope will lead to uh, an early registration of the drug. Uh, and and it, it doesn't really need to be said, but we are looking at a drug and an opportunity here because of the high unmet medical need of a multi-billion dollar market um, alone or as combination therapy. And Xanamem is a particularly good drug for potential combination therapy because of its low drug interaction potential. This slide summarizes the design. Uh, the trials at Actinogen that um, we are planning are relatively straightforward, simple parallel group designs. And in this case, uh, a six month treatment uh, examining 10 milligrams, five milligrams versus placebo. Uh, the primary endpoint will be the COG state computerized uh, test battery, uh, cognitive test battery. We'll also be looking at Amst the Amsterdam instrumental activities of daily living, which is a more functional score. Uh, and then we'll be doing a number of other tests of executive function and episodic memory as well. So the second program uh, is very intriguing. And a number of experts around the world think that depression is, is the indication for this kind of drug and this particular target. But it remains, of course, to be shown in our upcoming phase two trial because nobody's actually done that experiment before. However, we do know that difficulty thinking uh, is very common in depression. Um, these cognitive symptoms often persist during remission. Severe cortisol is a, uh, elevated cortisol is associated with severe uh, depression and with relapse. Um, and there've been a few attempts to, to change cortisol in the brain with uh, various drugs that were not particularly suitable for treatment in the long term, but short-term studies have suggested some benefit, uh, including a meta-analysis of the various different clinical trials. But nobody's really done a proper experiment with a drug that actually targets uh, reducing cortisol inside brain cells the way that Xanamem does. So we're very hopeful um, that we will see both improved cognition and potentially an improvement in depression symptoms in the clinical trial program. Again, the trial that we've designed is relatively straightforward. It's a simple parallel group, this time only six weeks in duration, which is common for depression trials. Uh, and uh, Actually, the number there is incorrect. I think it'll be about 160 patients, and so 80 patients per group. Uh, the primary endpoints will again be the cog state computerized uh, cognition battery, and the secondary uh, endpoints will include depression scales and uh, executive and memory function. This will largely be an Australian operation, uh, and that also gives us some benefit for the tax credit. So to sum up uh, for our pipeline, Alzheimer's disease, targeting the early stages of Alzheimer's where uh, a drug like Xanamem can have a major impact to improve quality of life and keep people independent for longer. Uh, depression, uh, where cognitive impairment is a major feature. And then Fragile X, we hope to be able to pursue in the future. We also have a study going with uh, Oxford University in, an, in a, an indication called MAX, which is mild autonomous cortisol secretion, which I won't go into today. So last slide to sum up uh, the timeline and our catalysts upcoming. So we've already shown this year, uh, the Xanamia study uh, confirmed cognitive enhancement being the second independent placebo controlled trial to, to do so. We've had a number of uh, important meetings at the recent bio conference with uh, potential pharmaceutical and biotech partners with a lot of interest there. We have in October biomarker data upcoming, uh, which, attend, which assesses the potential for the drug to be disease modifying, uh, but also potentially look, goes back and has another look in biomarker positive patients uh, of the ability of the drug to enhance cognition in the short term as well. Uh, we'll be presenting the Xanamia data at the San Francisco Alzheimer's disease conference called CTAT in November. And we're commencing the trials in both Alzheimer's and depression uh, this year and planning uh, regulatory meetings with the FDA in the near future. Next year will be very much about uh, enrolling these two clinical trials, and uh, there'll be a, uh, a lot of interesting work, including publications and uh, scientific presentations at the same time. And in 2023, we hope to get the depression top line results. And in 2024, the uh, Xanamia Alzheimer's disease top line results.
and therefore uh, go on to expand the depression and the Alzheimer's program into hopefully pivotal studies with agreement of the FDA and the Europeans. And so with that, I will pause and uh, say thank you for listening and I'll be pleased to take any questions.